Are you stuck? What about unhappy? Join Elena Chapman, author, mentor, and life coach for 30-minute moments as she challenges you to get out of the doldrum and start living your life to the fullest. It's time to celebrate that life with 30-minute moments. Welcome to 30-Minute Moments, and I am your host, Elena Chapman. All right, it is getting to be that holiday season, and I'll tell you what, if you're feeling chaotic, and that kind of is your normal state, or you feel like you're just chasing your tail, but most importantly, that you're finding that you're not enjoying the moment, you know, and when things go wrong, you take it so seriously. What is that, you know, and it can be the littlest thing, and it sets you off. What is that? Does it need to be? No. And I'm telling you, that is why I am having a very small get together retreat, mini retreat of renewal and balance. And that is starting on November 30th. In the, you get there on November 30th and it goes December 1st and December 2nd. This is going to be a phenomenal chance for you not only to renew, but to learn how to Finally, not let things upset you so. Not just chase your tail every day and do that so-called busy thing. To really start focusing and appreciating what you have now and where you're going. It's a beautiful time to do this. Now, this is down at French Lick. It's called the Balance and Renewal Mini Retreat. And I'll tell you what, it's for women and men. Because you know what, guys? You can get just as crazy as we can. (laughs) I know you can. (laughs) So if you're interested, make sure you go ahead and contact me um, at elenachapmanlife.com and just go to the contact page and say, hey, Elena, I heard about this on WoWo or the podcast, and I'm really interested in joining, and I would love to have you. Now, let's get to the show. 30-minute moments for your betterment and ease. And today, I have the coolest lady. You're going to love this. What if I told you that this person is one of the people that has put entrepreneurs on the map? Have you? How many of you, let me ask that way, have, of you have heard about or even participated in CEO space? CEO space was what Forbes called the must attend for all entrepreneurs. Now, I belong to CEO space, and I'll tell you, I have never met so many phenomenal entrepreneurs in my life, all gathered together in a very, very special way that we are collaborating, getting to know each other. It is like a networking on steroids. It is so phenomenal. But on top of that, you keep in contact with these people. And you collaborate. And it's also not just entrepreneurs, but investors come too. Business leaders. All to create this incredible growth environment. Now, September Dorman is the CEO of CEO Space. She is the chief. And we have her here today. Hello, September. Hello, Elena. Thank you so much for having me. I am so happy to have you. So, I want to get right to it. Now, what, why was CEO space? How, how did it form? What was in your imagination? What, I know that your husband also, Bernie Dorman, you know, really wanted to create this too. So, this, this beautiful, beautiful networking, how, what was it that stirred you into creating this beautiful atmosphere for entrepreneurs to grow? Well, as the story goes, it was about 30-something years ago, Bob Proctor and my husband, Bernie Dorman, were having a conversation about the um, challenges that business owners face and that there's a common thread of competition. Now, keep in mind, this was 30 years ago, and competition was a lot stronger then, I would say, And um, because now we see more companies that are really cooperating with each other, which is yes. so awesome. Yes, we and do. they wanted to create a solution to that. So creating an environment where like-minded individuals can come together to collaborate and cooperate with one another and not have this doggy dog 
competition um, where in order for me to win, you have to lose. That's an insane system and an insane model. So they wanted to change the way people did business and essentially help to change the world by being, bringing cooperation into it, starting from the professional arena. You know, I think you are right that we're seeing more and more collaboration. Still not enough. I still see some people who think that they, you know, gosh, you're stealing my clients. You're doing this. Um, you know, I've got to get myself out there and beat the competitor. And, you know, you still have that mindset. Kind of, would you do a little bit of um, either or? What, it, what it's like not to be like that? Let's set the environment for what, why we don't want to be like that. Yeah, so, well, to answer the question, I'm hearing two parts to it. So it what, is, what is always. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then secondly, what, why do we not want to live in either contrast, or why do we want to be in one of them? So right. the, I can give you my own personal experience, I think is the best way to explain the value of being in a cooperative environment and, and lead into what that contrast is. Um, being a part of CU Space, I've been a part of CU Space since 2007. Um, I have been incredibly blessed to come into the company and, and be a part of the team and to help move Bernie's vision forward. And along that way, along the way of us growing our own company and, and changing things up of how we do business, I've met some amazing people, as you have mentioned. Yes. And we've just established and build and, and build on those relationships that we've created. And, um, you know, Justin and Tonya Reckla. Yes, of course I do. We do the vetting for our faculty members. Um, we were in conversation. I was ready to start a new process within our company and I knew that Tonya had started the very similar process, um, creating a podcast. And so I had reached out to her and saying, look, I don't know what I don't know about podcasts. What can I do? And she's like, oh, let's just set up a call. I'll show you everything that I do. And Perfect. that's exactly what we did. We got on a call. She showed me her back office. She showed me how she managed it. And that's a cooperative type of behavior. That's what I consider to be a, a very cooperative. It behavior. is. It is. Well, it, it's... I had a need. Yeah, go ahead. Sonia had, had, had experience in, in executing on that need, and she showed me how to do it. Yeah, she did. And, and it comes from Sonia not having that feeling that you're going to steal, quote unquote, everything from her. Instead, she understands that everyone, there's a, more than enough for everyone in this world, and, and that... It all has to do with who you are and your message and what's going to resonate with whoever out there. And it has nothing to do with stealing. Um, am I right on that? Absolutely. Yeah, so it's coming along to that. Now, so if we have someone out there who's saying, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, they're saying, I know that it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, and I know that there are competitors at my door, and they're going to steal. I know it. Now, for that kind of person, let's talk about this mindset of col collaboration and this mindset of there is enough out there. And, and that's kind of going within, isn't it? That comes from within us, and it's our own belief system. It is. It, it does begin on the inside, our own thinking process, our own lens that we look through, our perceptions of how we view the world and, and, and the people that surround us. That also plays a role in it as well, too. But as our perception changes, our outside experience changes, including relationships. Yes. And I think that's the big key to it all is that, look, being a business owner can be a very lonely place. Especially yes. if you come from an environment where your family believes you need to work for a company and you move your way up to a ladder and stepping out to do your own thing is crazy and it's dangerous and it's scary and you'll never succeed and you don't know what you're doing and you're going to yeah. fail and I'm not going to help you. And there's yes. that part yeah. of it where you're kind of ostracized from, the com from your family, from your circle, from you your are. Friends, the people that don't believe in you. And it's so important to be a first become aware of that become aware of what your support system looks like or doesn't look like that's very important that awareness 
You need to form your support system. And those are people that believe in you. You know, I think being an entrepreneur, when we get out there, we, we love what we're doing. We, most of us. But that's why we started the business. Most of us didn't have to start a business in something. Even people who love to do startups and then sell and, and move on to something else. But they have a vision. And I, I think that in itself sometimes can feel lonely because you're the only one with that vision and you're always trying to get people with you. But I also think that if you open yourself up, once you share that vision and you build those people around you that support you, and then I, I, I just think that feeds. And the very next step is to know that you are only you. You are going to present this vision out there, this beautiful business, in the only way that you can because you're, off, you're you. You're you. Nobody else is going to do it your way. So to think somebody's going to steal from you is silly. It's silly. It, because if you're you, authentically you, and you're selling a product with you, they buy from the person. They don't just buy the product. Am I correct? Absolutely. A hundred percent. It's the relationship that we're hungry for. It's Even the when relationship. It a product, you know? Yeah. So let's talk about CEO space as far as the um, wonderful, even the investors. You have investors that come there to help these people. We do. One of our sweet spots is educating on capital, the process of raising capital for a business. Yeah. Um, and the reason why we focus on that is the founder of CEO Space, my husband, Bernie Dorman, has had a, he has a colorful background. He's been to prison for what he should have known about raising capital. Yes. And he thought that's crazy. Why isn't there a place for business owners or people to be educated on what are the laws? What can you say and what can you not say to investors? What, what are the boundaries? And then furthermore, he plussed it by saying, well, it's not enough to be compliant when you're raising capital, but you need to be in over compliance when you're raising capital. And we yeah. teach those things and we role play and that sort of thing. So investors know that our clients, our members are well educated in the capital process. So there's a, there's a certain amount of um, trust that's established in that relationship. And we have some pretty awesome projects, if I do say so myself. You too. You are listening to 30 Minute Moments, and I'm your host, Elena Chapman, and we will be right back with September Dorman. We're going to talk a lot more about this capital stuff. You're listening to 30 Minute Moments with Elena Chapman, helping you discover your true purpose on WoWo and at WoWo.com. Welcome back to 30 Minute Moments, everyone. Hey, this is Elena Chapman, your host, and I've got September Dorman, and I'm very, very excited about this for all you beginning entrepreneurs because, you know, so many times we wonder, should we put our money into this business and how much and, oh my God, it's going to take everything we have. But um, I have to say, I've done CEO space and I went there to learn about raising capital for my business. So I want to explore this more with September because it really is one of the best courses I have ever had. September, talk a little bit about this um, compliance and overcompliance. We don't want to scare people. And Bernie did go to jail because he didn't know. And yes, people, we can go to jail because we didn't know. What is that thing they say? Ignorance of the law is, is not a defense. So <laughs> it's true. So, so now trying to be compliant, because I think what scares people it, are the rules. Am I going to break the rules? Is this allowed? Am I, you know, what are some of the other fears that people have about capitalism? I'm sure you've heard them all. It, it rests on that what they don't know. Well, I don't know what I don't know. And I don't know where to begin. And, and I don't know what to say when I'm talking to an investor. And I don't know what's supposed to be in my package. Like, what is a package? <laughs> <laughs> so there's just some very basic things that, you know, the, the foundation of raising capital that we're not taught in school. Nobody teaches these no. things unless you specifically go into that as a profession and you go to college for these sorts of things. But as a business owner, you're not going to spend that amount of time and investment going to college to learn about something when the reality is, is that life is the best teacher anyway. It is. Um, not, not to say there's no value in going into school, um, but but as a business owner, when you know you want to expand your business, you want to take your vision to that next step, and you know that raising capital could be an option for you, 
Well, is crowdfunding the best option for you, or should you go with private investors? Ooh, um, two words that somebody might not know. What's crowd investing, and what's you know, and what's just having one investor? I think we figured that one out. But tell us a little bit about crowd investing. So, crowdfunding is relatively new. Um, Bernie has been a part of the. Um, the the government aspect of creating the rules around crowdfunding and his input was provided in all of that. And, and it's a relatively new concept about um, raising capital. You can raise a million dollars um, with reaching into your friends and family. And and I just want to disclose that I'm not the expert when it comes to raising capital. No, That's yeah. really the wheelhouse of my husband. But as we talk to our customers, we're, we're familiar with with their concerns and and filling in the gaps for them and what they need next and what do they need to know and how should they approach the situation and what is the best method for raising capital for them yeah based off of what their needs are and where they're wanting to take their business when i i've been part of that class and so i'll tell a little bit of what i know i'm i'm not the expert either but i'll tell you what i did learn and i did take the class three times September <laughs> because when you do it once it's not enough you got there's a lot there but I'll tell you what it does it helps m- uh, the person who is looking to get this capital and capital is for startups it's also for if you want you're changing something in the company or you want to add on say you want to buy that new building you want a franchise whatever it is but you need capital for that so this crowdfunding is the idea that you can ask people around you for not a whole lot of money, not for the whole sum, you split it up. But it's also learning, uh, number one, how to put your plan together. Because believe it or not, investors want to know, what's your game plan? What are you going to make? Well, how's this going to benefit me? I'm not investing in this just because I'm a nice person. I want a return. So you've got to show what your growth is going to be. And you've got to show what you've done already. And or what you hope to accomplish that year if you're just starting up. But also, it gives you confidence to do that. And also, all the record keeping. September, I learned, I learned how to really keep everything within the law, every documentation, so that I don't have to worry about the IRS coming knocking on my door saying, hey, you didn't follow this rule. It, it's a, I think anyone going into business who needs capital, this is this is a no-brainer. This is a course that you need. Don't you agree? Oh, absolutely. And you mentioned that you've attended three different times. So yeah. <laughs> it takes a long that's time that's for me to get stuff. <laughs> that's not abnormal, though. You know, think about here we are, a lot of our customers is in that 30, 40, 50 yeah. age range. And, yeah. and we have no education around no. it. Sure, there's some content that you can find online, but a full, complete, from A to Z process, there's a lot of layering. And so when you come in, it's like reading a book. You read the book. It's an awesome book. You have some amazing takeaways. You go back to that book a year later. Right. You read it again. You're going to take new takeaways. It's just layering on the information. And that's why we're a lifetime membership, so that our customers can continually come back as often as they need to really anchor in that content and feel confident about what they're doing, to feel very confident about it. We have so many success stories about people coming in of, yeah. with no money in their life at all, right? Yeah, but exactly. They have a big dream. They have this vision. They have a big dream. And they're committed to seeing that dream through, and they're going to do whatever it takes to reach their success. If they've got to attend the forum 50-something times, like Lisa Nichols, in order to get from A to Z, that's what it's gonna. That's what you'll do. That because you believe in yourself, you believe in your dream enough, and when you have an environment where you have those resources at your fingertips, you're gonna take advantage of those resources, any opportunity that you can. And it's also easier in that kind of environment because everyone is learning, and then you'll be sitting down at lunch just talking, and you find out you have someone who's looking to invest in companies sitting right next to you. (laughs) How easy for that? You don't even have to go look for them. I mean, you know, it's a very unique place. And how do you... Now, I'm going to ask you a question, because you are the CEO, 
you are the chief lady here. So taking on something like this, and you've been at it for a little while, what has been the biggest challenge? Oh, for me personally was leadership. That was my biggest challenge in the beginning when I stepped into not just the CEO role, but even before that. Um, and I moved into specifically that COO role a couple of yeah. years ago when I was there. Yes. I, it, you know, it dawned on me. I, I could probably use some more um, skill set and polishing around leading people and guiding them to their greatness as well as the company's greatness. Okay, one more question, and then we're going to go to my favorite part of the show. But what was the most valuable thing you learned about being a leader? What did you find the most valuable? That leading begins within myself. You are listening to 30 Minute Moments, and I'm Elena Chapman, your host, and this is September Dorman, CEO of CEO Space. This is 30 Minute Moments with Elena Chapman, helping you find your inner self every Sunday on WoWo and at WoWo.com. Do you want to be a part of a group that gets things done and stays in touch? Or perhaps you're not being who you truly want to be. Maybe you're relying on someone else to make you happy. It's time to expand your personal growth and take back your power. Join Savvy Sisterhood by Elena Chapman. The ladies meet on Facebook every Monday at 7 p.m. It'll be your first step to your personal growth. Join the group, and the best part is it's absolutely free. Savvy Sisterhood by Elena Chapman. Find it on Facebook and get ready to take back your power. Welcome back to my favorite part of 30 Minute Moments. I'm your host, Elena Chapman, and guess what time it is? The shift, the shift, the shift. Here we go. This is all about aha moments. And why do I love this segment so much? It's because we ignore our aha moments. So that's why I make sure that we learn how important these aha moments are. And September, what aha moment brought you into this fantastic knowing what a leader is? In one word, I would say compassion. My Ah. aha moment was around compassion. And it's not that I didn't have compassion for for people. Never has been a problem. I've always had a tremendous amount of empathy for other individuals, especially those that are struggling in life or are having a hard time finding their way. But yes. the, the aha moment was to have compassion towards myself. Yes. The that that has had on my ability to lead people to their greatness and to guide them. Phenomenal, isn't I cannot, it? I cannot put it into words what that has done for me. You know, I think when you have compassion for yourself and that leadership really starts to bloom because, you know, when we're hard on ourselves, it closes our mind. Did you find that? The difference? It closes our mind to um, opportunities and seeing things clearly. Yes. Well, as a leader, when you're guiding people, that, that level of compassion is, is there's a level of relatability. Yes, so that too. When you start to work and heal those broken stories or the, the pain of our past, when we begin to work on that, there's, the, there's, a, there's a certain level of compassion that you have for yourself in that that constant self-judgment yes. dissipates. It yeah. dissipates. You go, you, I understand what you're going through. I'm sorry that you're going through this, but we're going to figure it ah, out. Ah, I see where you're going. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I see it even from that other. Very yeah. cool. Very so cool. You're talking to somebody that you're leading, and you have that self-compassion first. The way that you communicate that with them is so much softer and more understanding yes. and more impactful. Yes. Is it more impactful? Yes. Well, and it causes them to create. When you have compassion for the people and you understand and you really, you you show that you care, it it gets them to create and want to be with you. You know what I mean? It's a win-win. Okay. So we've already talked about how wonderful CEO space is. Now, but it's not only for the beginner. We know that. It's wonderful that you come, yes. But what about the person who's been in business for so, you know, has been in the business for 30 years, 25 years, and is ready to do a new level or just wants to change things, you know, because we can get bored. We're entrepreneurs. It doesn't mean we don't get bored. How, what, what good does CEO space do for this experienced person? Yeah, so when I look at the experienced clients, the, the members that come in with, um, years of experience, anywhere between that three years up, 
Um, we really can help with ramping. You know, if you're looking to take your business to the next metal, to the next level, uh, you know that you're ready to raise capital. Maybe you need some new insight on strategy and sequence of, of how you can really ramp it. Um, another group that I like to look at is the growth. Those are people that say that I'm aware that I need to do these things in my business. I know what I need to do. I'm ready to really grow it to expand my business. And then that's another group is those expansions. I want to take, I want to add new alliances or JVs, or I want to expand outside my yes. community, or I want to go internationally as opposed to just domestically. And then the last group is our contributors, people that want to give back. And a lot of our faculty members fall into that place, is that they've reached a certain level of success. They love, love, love contributing to business owners, and we're a safe environment to do so. so Wonderful. Regardless of where you're at in business, there is because, oh, and you said it so well, you could be sitting at a meal table and you've got a startup on your right and then you have an investor on your left. And maybe there's a couple more people that have been in business for 10, 15, 20 yes. years, and they're ready to expand their offer yes. or expand their vision. Yeah. yeah, very cool. So there is something for every part of the entrepreneur's world, no matter where they're at. And it really is true. I've been there. I'm a member. I love it, you know, and I love the growth and I love the friends and the collaboration projects that I've built with other people that just bloom. I love it. So take a look, and how can they find out more about CEO Space? Where do they need to go? So you can go to ceospaceinternational.com. And okay. if you have any questions you want to ask me directly, feel free in emailing me. My email address is September, my first name, at our website. So September at ceospaceinternational.com. Okay. Awesome and easy. I want to thank you for being on the show. September, can you leave them with an awesome thought? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> you know, you had mentioned that in the very beginning where we were talking about this circle of influence, that if you're in business and you feel like it's a lonely place, yes. just to know that there's, there are environments, not just CEO space, but there are environments where people will support you and support your dream and cheerlead you on and just find those environments that really resonate well with you so that you can live your dream and your vision fully. I love that. You guys, you are listening to 30 Minute Moments, and I'm your host, Elena Chapman. You know what? We live, we want to have that betterment and ease in our life, in our business, in our love, in our family, and with ourselves. And this is the show that provides that. You guys have an awesome, awesome week. And of course, namaste. This has been 30 Minute Moments featuring Elena Chapman. If you missed an episode, Download it now at WoWo.com. Podcasts by Federated Media.